Our lesson for today is about thermodynamics. What is thermodynamics? It is the study of the relations between heat, work, temperature, and energy. The laws of thermodynamics describe how the energy in a system changes and whether the system can perform useful work on its surroundings. The first law of thermodynamics states that the energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can only be transferred from one form to another. Okay, the equation for the first law of thermodynamics is the change in internal energy or delta U is equal to the heat added to the system or Q minus work done by the system represented by letter w let's talk about the first law of thermodynamics so let's say this box is the system at lahat ng nasa labas niya is considered as the surroundings energy can flow into or out of the system and there is two ways that energy can do so and that is heat and work so if the heat flows into the system, the system gains energy. And that energy is known as the internal energy. And that is represented by the capital U. Now, the surroundings can do work on the system. So, yan yung dalawang ways so that system can increase energy. First, the transfer of heat. And then second, is by the surroundings that perform work on the system. Okay, gets? For example, the surroundings performed 275 joules. That means the system's internal energy goes up by 275 and the surroundings loses 275 joules. The energy of the surroundings, however, has to decrease by 275 and so, the energy has not been created nor destroyed. Na-transfer lang siya from the surroundings, papasok sa system. Okay. Hindi lang basta nagkakaroon ng 275 joules si system, tapos nabawasan si surroundings out of nowhere. That 275 joules of energy came from somewhere and it came from the surroundings. Okay. It is also the same as if the system loses 500 joules, then the surrounding also gained 500 joules. Okay, now there are three types of system. You have to familiarize the open system, the closed system, and the isolated system. In the open system, matter can enter inside it, so matters from the air can go inside of it like oxygen and also heat energy can float into an open system therefore matter and energy can transfer into an open system okay in a closed system naman matter can't flow into it so oxygen can go in and outside of a closed system however energy can still flow into a closed system so in a closed system only energy can go in and out of a closed system. While on an isolated system, energy or matter cannot enter or leave. So the mass within an isolated system is fixed. It doesn't change and the total energy of an isolated system also doesn't change because no energy can flow into it or even out of it. Now, let's go back to the equation of an internal energy, which is delta U is equal to Q minus W. Whereas, Q represents the heat energy that flows in and out of the system, minus the work done by the system. And every time work is done by the system, the system has to spend energy to do work. So, the internal energy of the system decreases. That is why work is negative. Okay. So, in this case, work is negative when work is done on the system. And work is positive 
when work is done by the system. You have to remember this. We focus on the surroundings when work is done by the system. The system loses energy, but the surroundings gain energy. And that is when work is positive. Okay, you have to remember that, ha? Huh? Okay, let's do a sample problem. Our problem states that calculate the change in the internal energy of a system if 275 joules of energy is added to it and if the system performed 150 joules of work. So, let's calculate it using this equation. The delta U is equal to Q minus W. Remember, if Q is positive, heat energy is added to the system. If Q is negative, heat energy is removed from the system if w is negative work is done on the system if w is positive work is done by the system you have to remember this okay so q is associated with the heat energy which is 275 joules now is our q here positive 275 or negative 275 now notice what it says, 275 joules of heat energy is added to the system. So, that means our 275 joules is positive. And then it says that the system performed 150 joules of work. So that means work is done by the system. That means now that our work is going to be positive 150 joules. So now... We can calculate the change in the internal energy of the system that is Q is equal to positive 275 joules minus positive 150 joules is equal to 125 joules. The answer here is the internal energy is equal to 125 joules. Gets? Okay. For a complex example, we have 1,500 joules of heat energy was added to a gas. The gas expands at a constant pressure of 4,500 pascals from 0 0.02 cubic meters to 0 0.05 cubic meters. So A, how much work was performed? How much work was performed by the gas or on the gas? B, Calculate the change in the internal energy of the system. Okay, first let's compute for the work. So our formula for work is work is equal to Pascal times the delta of volume. To convert this to joules, it is given that 1 Pascal times cubic meter is equal to 1 joules. Okay, now that we have the formula, let's compute for work. Okay, work is equal to 4,500 Pascal times 0 0.05 cubic meters minus 0 0.02 cubic meters. Okay, let's compute for that. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.02 equals 0 0.03. Okay, we'll now have the value for the volume, which is 0 0.03. So, work is equal to 4,500 Pascal multiplied by 0 0.03 cubic meters. That is equal to times 0 0.03. 1,350 joules. Now, we have the value for work. Next, we have to determine whether 
was the work performed on the gas or by the gas. Let's go back to the problem. Remember that whenever W is positive, the work is done by the system. So this is performed by the gas. Positive. 1,350. Okay. So now that we have the value for work, let's move on to letter B. Okay. Which is calculate the change in the internal energy of the system. Okay. Let's go back to the equation. Our equation for internal energy is delta U is equal to Q minus work. Okay. We know that our value for Q is positive 1,500 joules. And our calculated value for work is positive 1,350 joules. So, we have 1,500 joules minus positive 1,350 joules is equal to 150 joules. Okay? It is positive so it is safe to say that the internal energy is in is increased to 150 joules okay this is the answer do we get it ba okay ko baka kasi may naguluhan let's go back to the problem kung bakit it is considered that the work is performed by the gas it is because remember we have computed work here okay here remember pressure of 450 pascals from 0 0.02 cubic meters to 0 0.05 cubic meters is because it is said here that the gas expands at a constant pressure so the gas itself is doing the work because it is the one that is expanding. Okay? Do we get it na ba? Okay? The work is done by the gas because it is the one that expands to a constant pressure. Okay? One of the thermodynamics potential is what we call enthalpy. Enthalpy is the sum of the internal energy and the product of the pressure and volume of a thermal thermodynamic system. It reflects the capacity to do non-mechanical work and the capacity to release heat. Enthalpy is denoted as H. Specific enthalpy denoted as small h. Common units used to express enthalpy are joule, calorie, or BTU, British thermal unit. What is the importance of enthalpy? Measuring the change in enthalpy allows us to determine whether a reaction was endothermic or absorb heat or positive change in enthalpy or exothermic release heat a negative change in enthalpy it is used to calculate the heat of reaction of a chemical process change in enthalpy is used to measure heat flow in calorimetry it is measured to evaluate a throttling process of a joule thomson expansion enthalpy is used to calculate minimum power of compressor enthalpy change occurs during a change in the state of matter so enthalpy is the amount of heat or energy absorbed by the system to cause a change in the system or the amount of heat expelled by the system as a result of a change in the system so that means either a system will absorb energy or the system will expel energy or the heat and so that is considered as the enthalpy. Enthalpy is being the heat absorbed or expelled. Now, if the enthalpy is positive, the energy is absorbed. If the enthalpy is negative, then energy is expelled. And here we see that 
if the delta H, H is defined as the enthalpy and so the change in enthalpy would be delta H. Okay, remember that enthalpy is represented by H and here we see delta H. It represents the change in enthalpy and when delta H is greater than zero, then there is endothermic change or there is heat absorption. And of course, that means as the energy is being absorbed and nothing is going to happen to the system until that energy is absorbed. So the energy needs to be available for a system to go through a change. But if delta H is negative, then we call it an exothermic process. Therefore, the system expels heat. So that reaction tends to be spontaneous. We say spontaneous because when a chemical reaction expels heat, it tends to be spontaneous. So we can write the equation for enthalpy as being the internal energy of the system plus P times V. Remember, P times V is equals to the work that is done. The work that is done to expand the system up the atmosphere. So we can write the equation for enthalpy as the internal energy of the system plus P times V. P times V represents the work that is done to expand the system into the atmosphere. So if we then write the equation as a change in enthalpy, which is the more useful form, then the change in enthalpy, which is the heat added or removed from the system. Again, if it's positive, it is heat added to the system. And if it's negative, it's the heat removed from the system. That's equals to change in internal energy of the system that can also be positive or negative plus the work done by the system or the P times V. So when we think of it, we can make an equation that is analogous to the first law of thermodynamics. When we say it's analogous, it is similar to the first law of thermodynamics. So let's take a look at that. Here we have delta U is equal to Q minus W or the change in the energy of the internal system is equal to Q minus W or the, the heat added to the system minus the work done by the system. If we now replace Q by delta H, so the heat added to the system can now become the enthalpy, the heat added to the system minus the work done by the system in a constant pressured environment, which is of course P times delta V. First, let us think about it as a pressure being constant. So it's heat added to the system minus work done by the system. And therefore, we solve this equation for delta H. We get the change is equal to the change in internal energy plus the work done by the system. Then we have to remember that when heat added to the system, it is used to do two things. First, it increased internal energy through the system, which is delta U. And it is also used to expand the system against the pressure of the atmosphere. That requires work because imagine you have to push the atmosphere away. So when the system expands because of action or whatever that is causing the change in the system. So enthalpy is done by the sum of the change in internal energy plus the work done by the system to expand against the pressure of the atmosphere. So this is where we end our discussion. Let's continue the discussion next meeting and let us discuss about entropy.
Gibbs energy, the second law of thermodynamics, then the Gibbs function as the driver of biophysical processes. Okay? See you next meeting. Don't forget to leave your attendance in the comment sections, okay? Thank you for watching.